If you want to grab some awesome pictures of smoke, grab your cameras and stay tuned because we're going to have some fun. I've always been fascinated by pictures of smoke. And the reason is because as smoke traverses through the air and the current grabs hold of it, you can have an infinite number of possibilities as to how that smoke's going to twist, turn, and rotate. And that means that no two images will look alike and you never know what you might get and that always intrigues me. So what are we going to need to make this happen? Well to begin with, you're going to need a camera like this. Now this is an entry level DSLR. This is the Nikon D3400, but I want you to understand it does not matter what type of camera you have. I'm going to show you the specific settings and the materials needed to make this happen. I've always been passionate about entry level cameras because if you're new to the world of photography, I want you to understand one important concept and that is you do not necessarily need the most expensive equipment to grab great images. So what else do we need? Well, we're going to need a speed light like this one right here. Now this is the newer 750 Mark II and I did a video review on this speed light. This is considered a budget speed light and I also did a video review on the remote trigger system which is what's at the bottom here. Now you don't necessarily need a remote trigger system. You can actually use your camera's commander mode and what that is is that your camera uh, will leverage the built-in flash to trigger the speed light. So I just happen to have the remote trigger system, so I'm going to use it. What else do we need? Well, we're going to want to put blinders on this flash. And if you think about it, it's kind of like blinders on a horse. So in this case, uh, you can use poster board. I just have an old um, advertisement right here. It's nothing special, but I'm going to use this and wrap it around the flash so that we can take the power of that flash and it'll create a tunnel and push that light forward and I've just got a little rubber band right here to hold that on. What else do we need? Well, we're obviously going to need a source of smoke. I'm not a smoker, so I'm a fitness freak. And what I've got for our source of smoke is an incense stick, which is right here. Now this incense stick will put off just enough smoke for us to capture the images that we want and it'll burn relatively slow. And these things are very, very cheap. They sell them all over the place. So this is a good source of smoke. With all that said, let's go ahead and jump right in. I'm going to show you the settings on the camera and how we're going to lay this out, and let's have some fun. I've placed the camera on a tripod here, but I want you to understand this tripod is optional. Now, why is it optional? Because we're going to go into manual mode, and we're going to set our shutter speed to 1 200th of a second, or maybe 1 1 60th of a second. And keep in mind that you can hand hold your camera all the way down to 1 60th of a second, roughly. So with the shutter speed that we're going to be at, you're perfectly fine in holding the camera. So why did I put it on a tripod? Well, I'm going to show you in just a minute how we're going to set up our focal plane. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my hands to generate a good smoke trail. And by leaving the camera on a tripod, it'll be very, very easy for me to simply press the shutter without having to hold the camera and move it around and try to lock focus. So I'll show you how that's done in just a minute. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to use the speed lights and as mentioned we're going to create the blinder for the speed lights and I just have this advert and I'm just going to wrap it around and before I do that I'm going to need my trusty rubber band. So I'm going to put my rubber band around the speed light like this. Okay. And you want to get that on first going to make it a lot easier to attach your blind. So now I'm going to take the blind and I'm simply going to wrap it around like this. And you might be looking at this thinking, well, this thing does not look like it's anything special. And you would be absolutely right. <laughs> this is not anything special. This is, uh, it doesn't have to look like it's anything special either. It just has to be effective in what it's going to do. So as you can see right here, uh, we have created a blind and this is going to take the power of the flash and it's going to concentrate it forward and it's going to prevent light spilling to the back or to the front and that's really what we want to get from this. Now 
I want you to know that I have a studio light off to the side and you may look behind me and you'll see um, I have some other artifacts in the room. It will not be picked up on the image. Now when I did a video on grabbing droplets of water I had some people ask well how did I get the background so black? There's two ways to make that happen. You can do so when you actually create the shot by manipulating the f-stop. Now you got to keep in mind that at 1 1 60th of a second or 1 200th of a second that shutter speed is far too fast to actually expose the images in the background here. But we may want to make it even darker by taking that sh uh, the f-stop and we could raise the number on that and shrink our aperture down. So what I'm going to do with the speed light is we're just going to angle it forward and I'm going to put it on this little table back here. Now keep in mind, you can use whatever you want. I just have these two little tables. It's nothing special. The other thing I have here is this little block of wood. Now you don't need a block of wood like this, but I'm gonna explain why I have this. I'm gonna use this as a gauge for my focal plane. So I'm gonna lay this down on this table right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a box like this right here. You can use a book, you can use anything you want, but we're gonna put it right in the middle and then we're going to focus our camera on that box or the book or whatever you have and when you're done you can take this away and your focus will be locked in now as I've mentioned in other videos I use back button focus and the beauty behind this is when you lock in this focus you will not need to focus anymore and this will be dialed in so when I go to press the shutter the shutter will no longer try to lock in on focus if you haven't seen that video I'll post a link below it's very helpful so with all that said Let's go ahead and take a look at the specific settings that we need to dial in on this camera to make this happen. The camera is set to an ISO of 100. Now we're set at 100 because we want the best possible image we can get from this camera and there's no need to raise the ISO here. I have the f-stop set to an f9. Now keeping in mind you can play with this if you want and you could actually increase this if you really want to try to darken the background a little more. In this case, I'm going to leave it at f9 because it's just a good sweet spot on this lens. Keeping in mind, I am using the kit lens, the 18 to 55 that came with this particular camera. As you can see, the shutter speed is set to 1 200th of a second, and you don't want to go any faster than that because that is a typical sync speed, the max sync speed, with the speed light that we have. You can go slower, but you just don't want to go faster. So I know that I'm going to be capped at 1 200th of a second, and that's where we're at. One thing I want to show you real quick is focusing. So I'm not a big fan of live view, but I'm going to go ahead and activate it here. And what I'm going to do, as I mentioned, is I'm going to show you how I'm just going to set the box right in the middle of the focal plane. And keeping in mind, I have our stick of wood right there. So this is the box you can use anything you want use a book whatever you want and as I mentioned I use back button focus which is right here I'm gonna go ahead and activate our focus so now our focus is locked I'm gonna go ahead and remove the box that I have here and we're done we are done with our focus at that point we shouldn't have to focus anymore and we're ready to go ahead and light our incense stick and I'm gonna go ahead and take the studio light here and turn it off because I don't like a lot of light around this area. Um, we have just enough so that we can see and that's really all I'm shooting for right here. It's supposed to smell like strawberries but it really doesn't smell like strawberries. Nonetheless, before I shut off this studio light, I want to show you what I'm going to actually do here to create a smoke trail. And I don't know how well you can see it here, um, but with the studio light it makes for a pretty decent smoke trail but all I'm gonna do is come over here I'm gonna hold on to this and I'm gonna traverse this along the focal plane which is my block of wood that I have down here this lets me know that this is where I've dialed the focus in now keeping in mind at an f8 we're gonna have uh, a little room to work with as far as focus is concerned so I'm just gonna move it back and forth like this right here and I'm going to press the shutter and we're going to fire off a few shots. I'm going to go ahead and turn this studio light off right now and let's see what we can capture.
on a midnight train Take me far away from here Full moon hill shining Pale light I'm driving on you Take me far away from here Right now, cause I won't wait till I find, find my way back home. Right now, baby, right now, baby, right now, baby, right now, baby. Catch you from the garden, better say prayer. This ain't no place of mercy, safety. So all our lives We play this game Dance on through Burning flame I'm burning, baby I'm burning
Well, that was a lot of fun. The only downside is the fact that this place stinks because of that incense. It was supposed to be strawberry, but I really don't think it's strawberry. Nonetheless, I think we captured some really cool, unique, awesome images. And my advice to you is that if you try this, regardless of your smoke source, move it across the frame at different speeds. Take it nice and slow, take it fast, move it up and down, and see what kind of unique images you get. I'm sure you're going to capture something really cool. Now the next video I do, I think it's going to be on reviewing the tripods, or it's going to be on a review of the fixed 50 millimeter lens, which I think is an awesome lens. I've had a handful of people ask questions about it, so it might be time to do that review. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. It's called The Real World. More often than not, I post videos about photography and technology, but you never know. I post them about things that happen in the real world. So until the next video, take care of yourself and be safe.